him at SMTAI for Winnie TV in Rosemont in Chicago. And I'm joined by David from Co Young and uh, Michael from Aegis. Great to have you here on a panel that uh, we will investigate AI and the operator in a manufacturing environment and in an uh, Industry 4.0 scenario. Key question here is how is AI being used currently and where is where are we going with it? So I really want to get a feel for whether AI is taking over or whether uh, people and um, artificial intelligence needs to work together and how that all works. So, let me start with you, David. From your perspective, is AI already a reality within the, the, well, the reality of a manufacturing environment? Not yet. We certainly want to uh, improve, we want to optimize, and have the operations of a floor be much more efficient. We aren't there yet because we still need manpower. We need the resources to do the day-to-day uh, -day activities, the physical labor, setups, those things. And until that becomes completely automated and controlled, uh, that AI will not be uh, readily available. And certainly there's a lot of development that has started, but uh, the, the labor force is still very much needed at this day. Okay, but that sounds as though you're going in the direction of that the labor force might not be needed at some point in the future. So, you know, let's debate. Let's see if that's really the case. What, what's your take on it, Michael? I think that the labor, like let's say, let's call them humans 4.0. This is going to be a new generation of human operators. Because right now we see humans performing a particular task within manufacturing. Maybe they're putting parts in the boards all day, every day. Maybe they're doing some kind of maintenance work or material logistics. Their assignment is fixed. They have a lot of skills about their assigned task and that prevents them from moving around. However, Human 4.0 will have a VR headset. Actually, it's augmented reality. So that the AI in this case is looking at the factory and the needs around the factory. And it's planning, okay, I want to utilize this human resource. Now, humans are the most flexible resource we have in manufacturing. They can do anything if they're told correctly what to do in the right way such they don't make mistakes. So what we will see is human 4.0, augmented reality glasses on, being directed to do different jobs. Maybe it's quality check, maybe it's material logistics, maybe it's looking at the result of a test to see some kind of, uh, not a defect, but let's say something different happened from normal. And they wouldn't need to have specific skills because they would be di being directed on what to do. So the, for the human, the experience is much more varied. They can do different things every day. They're not consigned to one particular thing. And they're interacting with most advanced software in the world. So this is going to be appealing for younger people, younger engineers to come in and younger operators to come in to manufacture. That's actually quite interesting because I know we had a discussion in a previous round right. table where you mentioned actually the, uh, the older experienced generations are slowly leaving the industry. The less experienced people are coming into the industry, but you know skill sets are still uh, you know lacking, and, and sure. certainly experiences. So, is this the solution to what you are highlighting essentially as? Not so much a solution, but you were asking about where does the labor force play in this role of Industry 4.0 with AI technology? When we look at manufacturing as a whole. We, of course, in the beginning had a lot of manual soldering, uh -huh. right? And mm. now we have robotic systems that do automated soldering. Mm. They have very strong temperature controls. Mm. They have very good consistent qualities joint after joint. Right. So when we look at that, it's the dexterity aspect of the human element. Our mm. flexibility and our mobility that provides the current state of our manufacturing floors. But with the development of robotics and the uh, level of accuracy, dexterity, self-autonomy that they are able to uh, currently operate in, if and when, it's not an if, it's a when, they reach that level of autonomy of that dexterity and integrated with AI, we would potentially see a lights out factory where they would actually be doing the rework at the quality levels of a full lights out factory. 
I, I agree to an extent about that because we see, I mean, like your machines, they are getting cleverer and cleverer and cleverer as time goes on. And the need for the lower level kind of understanding of exactly what's going on isn't required anymore because the machine has that built in. So we're not seeing a skills shortage about people going out. The skill is simply going inside the machine. And you're building these excellent machines. However, what we see from Industry 4.0 is the level of utilization and automation above the level of machines. So we will see people progress in an upward direction, not having to understand how to do a perfect soldering joint, but knowing how and when that soldering joint should be necessary, how to best meet a customer demand. So the work that is done goes to a higher level. Now, maybe these guys are sat outside of production and we turn the lights off. It's possible. But still there are people involved in production being aided by AI to make these key decisions for a long time in the future, I think. And that's probably the key point. A lights out factory doesn't mean that there aren't people involved, even though you don't see them inside the factory. Mm. So, I mean, the, the, the nicest scenario is I'm lying on a beach somewhere with my goggles on <laughs> and I'm controlling what's going on on the factory floor. Sure. Is uh, that what you're saying? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure they would allow that, but you could potentially do that, yes, yeah. as a proof of concept. Well, yeah. we, we see right now in today's modern age about doctors performing surgeries across you know, oh, yeah. countries, borders, remotely mm -hmm. via a VR augmented um, reality. So imagine you could literally be sitting on a beach using a VR goggle set and doing a feeder change virtualized. So there are those opportunities and, and definitely possibilities in the near future. I think the technology kind of makes us want to run before we can walk because right. <laughs> lying on a beach, check, goggles, check, being able to virtually do this thing, check, but right now all the feeders are manual. So we need to find a, a feeder right. that will be automated. Right. So there are various elements that need to come together, but it's really exciting to see some of them, like your machines, come up already. We need to fill in the gaps around. A lot of it is software, a lot of it is people, skills, and perceptions of what needs to be done? Again, what we always see from customers is that challenge where they want to um, have their existing staff and empower them right. with the opportunities where the software, the ability to uh, do an inspection and have a judgment that is really driven by an AI engine yeah. uh, and removing a lot of that subjectivity, that's that's the uh, the drive behind uh, I the absolutely industry agree. for AI. Yeah, because today, for example, if the customer changes their mind and orders something different in a different quantity, it's like telephone calls, emails, it's discussions around the water cooler. It takes hours or even days to make a decision. In the world you just described, sure. the data is right there. The people with the experience say, yeah, right, do it. They understand the consequence, they understand the benefit, the risks, and it's fine, go ahead. And that's the kind of world of the manufacturing of the future near future. So, knowing that, mm -hmm. and, and hearing that there are also already some developments within companies like your, your companies uh, mm -hmm. that are going into that direction, but knowing that this is imminent, this is going to come, mm -hmm. do we need to make some adjustments in the way we train our existing employees, in the way we educate the future generations? in terms of creating new skill sets, new job specs? What, what do we need to do to set ourselves up not to fail with what's, what we know is coming? Mm -hmm. The people who traditionally have been working in manufacturing have had a very precise focus on a particular area of technology. This kind of approach isn't going to work. The good news is that there are people now who are entering the workforce who are already very experienced about using software. And they wouldn't even know they're using software. They just pull their phone out and do whatever they want they to do. They grew up with it. They just grew up with yeah. it. It's natural. It's an instinct. So, you know, people of my generation would find this a challenge to, to change and adjust to. For them, it's just like, well, yeah, didn't it always work like this? You know, <laughs> what did you used to do? You know, and they will pick it up very, very quickly. So I don't see it as being a particular barrier. The barrier is who is going to provide the education to these people in a way that they will understand, or do they have to figure it out themselves in the same way that we had to years ago? 
So I hope that as we embrace these technologies, as the machines get cleverer, as communication gets stronger, that we encourage this kind of new kind of skill to come in and we attract those kind of people. From what we've seen, perhaps there is a, a project in place where they're accumulating and processing all of the historical data is in manufacturing and the challenges that manufacturing has had. Yeah. Um, uh, using that and incorporating it into existing AI engines and see what it says. Yeah. You know, what, mm. what we have been doing right and what we haven't been doing right. Mm. Um, and what should we change in order to change the environment? What, that certainly would be a question I would like to answer. Mm. I would love to see, have we been on the right path? Mm. Or has it been always that, um, Learn lesson learned, and then mm -hmm. we move a different direction. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that would be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, a small example of, of how the kind of paradigm changes. Look at your machines. I mean, years ago, people would buy an inspection machine to find defects, as a filter mm -hmm. to stop defects going out into the market, and they're very, very good at that. But today, with the kind of software and statistics that we use, these machines detect defects that haven't even happened yet, using Six Sigma technologies right. and software, they are able to say, guys, we need to make some adjustment here. So the machine isn't sold as something to find a defect anymore. It's actually preventing defects. And this is the only answer to zero defect. I mean, that's been looked for for about 20 years in manufacturing, and now it's a reality. But this is how even the same machine is being changed in terms of its perception. Sure. And that will apply across the whole factory. I think. That's absolutely correct. And Koyang's endeavors are having the uh, closed loop. Mm. Not just to you know feed back to a printer or feed forward to a placement, uh -huh. but the process closed loop. Right. And right. then when we incorporate another level, another mm. layer with the AI engine to recognize process changes, just as a uh, manufacturing engineer, process engineer is able mm. to do, now we're talking about the opportunity for lights out. And where it can self-control based on the realities of what it detects, and measures, measure being key, not just inspect. Right, because right. we can't just say, yes, pass or fail, but it passed by how much, yeah. right. and how much did it fail by. Fascinating as ever. Um, I'm encouraged by the thought that at least I get, I'm getting a sense that uh, people will be supported by AI and the possibilities that it, it, it gives us, and there will still be a need for us, whether we're at a beach or, <laughs> or not. Thank you very much for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks.